Hello people what is up? Welcome back to our channel where we provide the latest news, music, albums, and mixtapes. Please show this AI some love by smashing the like button, subscribing to our channel, and turning on notifications for more news like this. Joe Rogan addresses COVID-19 vaccine controversy surrounding his podcast. Joe Rogan addresses some of the recent concerns surrounding his podcast in a new video. Joe Rogas has been a lightning rod for controversy these past few months, with things seemingly picking up on the proposed censorship front the past couple of weeks, mostly thanks to COVID-19. The stand-up comedian-turned-podcast host has been streaming the Joe Rogan experience exclusively from the Spotify platform since September 2020, after he announced a licensing deal with them worth a reported $100 million back in May of 2020. Since landing on Spotify, there have been intermittent rumblings and rumors of Spotify employees being upset over the lack of censorship on the podcast, and as of late, it seems the wider general public has also been up in arms about the guests on Rogan's show. After Rogan hosted two doctors in particular, who both discussed COVID-19 and vaccine misinformation in detail as well as other topics that are simply shunned or not discussed in mainstream news, Rogan himself became a target for allegedly spreading misinformation, hordes of people who may not have actually listened to the podcast, including doctors and scientists, began targeting Rogan for cancellation, although Spotify has not budged. It's worth noting, one of the podcast guests who caused a stir, Dr. Robert Malone, is actually the inventor of the mRNA vaccine technology, which inevitably led to the COVID-19 vaccine. The other guest who riled up the public was Dr. Peter McCullough, a cardiologist who is the most published physician in his field, in history, as Rogan stated in his new video clip. 270 doctors, scientists, nurses, and educators have signed an open letter to Spotify, urging the platform to prevent the spread of COVID-19 misinformation on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. In 2020, Spotify struck a multi-million dollar exclusivity deal with Rogan. Since then, the podcaster has repeatedly spread numerous unchecked conspiracy theories and COVID-19 misinformation to the public. The latest incident occurred when Dr. Robert Malone appeared on the New Year's Eve episode of JRE. Prior to his appearance, Malone was suspended from Twitter for posting a video defending theories about the dangers of mass vaccination, specifically in children and young adults. During his podcast appearance, Malone spoke with Rogan about his self-created phrase, mass information psychosis, arguing that a third of the population is being hypnotized into wearing masks and getting vaccinated. A P News fact checked his theory and spoke with professionals in the psychology field who claim that the phrase has no academic credibility. Malone's appearance is just one of the many misinformed concerns included in the open letter. Rogan has promoted the use of ivermectin, a drug that hasn't been approved by the FDA to treat COVID-19. He has also suggested that young, healthy, people shouldn't get vaccinated but has retracted this statement. The letter also raises concern for Rogan's audience demographic. The average age of his audience is 24, and a study from Washington State found that unvaccinated individuals between the ages of 12 to 34 are more likely to be hospitalized than those who have received the vaccine. In the nine-minute video released today, Rogan goes on to refer to these two men as having an opinion that's different from the mainstream narrative. He continues, I wanted to hear what their opinion is. I had them on, and those episodes, in particular, were labeled as being dangerous, dangerous misinformation in them. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things we thought of as misinformation, just a short a while ago, are now accepted as fact, for instance, Eight months ago if you said, if you get vaccinated you can still catch COVID, and you can still spread COVID, you would be removed from social media, they would ban you from certain platforms. Now, that's accepted as fact. If you said, I don't think cloth masks work, you would be banned from social media, now that's openly and repeatedly stated on CNN. If you said, I think it's possible that COVDI-19 came from a lab, you would be banned from many social media platforms. Now, it's on the cover of Newsweek. All of those theories that at one point in time were banned were openly discussed by the two men I had on my podcast. As Rogan addressed both his fans and his detractors, he admitted, as he often does, to not knowing anything, and not knowing if either man is wrong or right. 
He also addressed the recent Neil Young and Joni Mitchell controversy, as the former artist recently called on Spotify to either remove Rogan from their platform or else remove his catalog, while the latter decided to remove herself. Joni Mitchell has joined the conversation. We've been reporting on the ongoing drama involving music icon Neil Young and Spotify after he demanded that his team make sure his catalog was removed from the streaming service. Young has taken major issue with Joe Rogan and his podcast, more specifically, what Young has called misinformation being spread about COVID-19 and the vaccines. Rogan is making big bucks with the platform and is one of Spotify's most watched or listened to channels, so, in the end, Spotify acquiesced in Young's decision and removed his music. We want all the world's music and audio content to be available to Spotify users. With that comes great responsibility in balancing both safety for listeners and freedom for creators, Spotify said in a statement. We have detailed content policies in place and we've removed over 20,000 podcast episodes related to COVID since the start of the pandemic. We regret Neil's decision to remove his music from Spotify, but hope to welcome him back soon. The decision has caused a massive debate about whether or not the company made the right choice and it looks as if other artists have followed, well, at least one. Fellow music legend Joni Mitchell has reportedly requested that her catalog, which spans way back to the mid-1960s, be removed from Spotify, as well. I've decided to remove all my music from Spotify, she wrote on her website. Irresponsible people are spreading lies that are costing people their lives. I stand in solidarity with Neil Young and the global scientific and medical communities on this issue. Additionally, in response to this controversy, SiriusXM announced that it would be relaunching Neil Young Radio in solidarity. Finally, Rogan helped announce a new feature that Spotify is implementing concerning these controversial podcasts, specifically these ones about COVID. These types of episodes will contain a disclaimer, prompting listeners to speak to their doctor. Check out his video below. Let us know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. We are dedicated to bringing you the most up-to-date news as possible. We ask that you smash the like button. Please subscribe to our channel it really helps us to make headway in the algorithm. And please turn on notifications if you like this video and you want to see more. Once again thank you very much and we will see you in the next one.